citizens of St. Lucia, good evening. On the 26th of July 2021, when you elected the St. Lucia Labour Party to administer the affairs of the country, I promise you, as Prime Minister, I will have an inclusive government that would keep in constant consultation and communication with you. I intend to keep that promise and always make decisions based on evidence, professional advice, and never political expediency. In July 2021, as is the case now, I remain very concerned about the rise in the level of infections and COVID-19 related deaths in St. Lucia. And to the families who have lost loved ones, please accept my condolences. In July 2021, the presence of the Delta variant had not been as prevalent globally as it is today. While this is no comfort, the Delta variant has a significant increased rate of transmission than the original Alpha variant. The Delta variant is creating challenges for all countries all over the world. Rich and poor countries alike are experiencing increasing rates of infection. Some countries have returned to levels of infection and deaths greater than the same time last year. In St. Lucia, we have had to cope with this global trend with significantly less available financial resources. It's a known fact that the UWP administration borrowed heavily, ostensibly to deal with the issues arising from the COVID-19 variant. The facts are as follows. By May 2021, there were four loans contracted for the broad purpose of targeting and solving COVID-19 related issues. These loans were from the Caribbean Development Bank, 109.9 million, the International Monetary Fund Rapid Credit Facility, 78.9 million, International Development Association, 81 million, the Exim Bank of the Republic of China on Taiwan, 54 million, totaling 323.8 million of borrowed funds. Up to May 2021, the loans had been utilized as follows. Health-related issues, 30.4 million. Quarantine facilities, 11.4 million. Social responses and income support, 17.4 million. CDB debt repayments, 28.9 million. Budget support, capital projected expenses, 45.6 million. Budget support, debt payment and salary expenses, 167.8 million. Total, 301.5 million. The above fact indicates that the majority of the funds, 242.3 million, were not utilized for health and COVID-19 expenses, but instead for government's capital projects, repayment of debt, and liquidity support, including the payment of salaries. Let me be clear. The 301.5 million of loans were utilized between the year 2020 and May 2021. My administration only had access to 20 million of these borrowed funds for use on behalf of the people of St. Lucia. Considering the effects of the Delta variant, it is reasonable to assume that more resources are needed to mitigate the effects of fighting the pandemic at a time when concessionary loans seem not to be as readily available as last year. Let me briefly refresh your memories on some of the steps we have taken since assuming office on July 27, 2021 in the fight against COVID. We protected the health of our police by adding a ticketing option to the available measures for the enforcement of COVID-19 protocols. However, the original enforcement measures were still available, but unenforceable since the government had demolished the custody suites. Hence, there was limited space to detain offenders if detention was required. We have increased the medical and ancillary staff at the Victoria Respiratory Hospital and with the assistance of FLO, installed an improved communication system to allow easier contact between medical staff and patients and patients with relatives. 
the home monitoring team has been strengthened and we further intend to increase the numbers on that team. COVID-19 testing has increased. The daily number of COVID tests conducted at the Ezra Long Laboratory has increased from an average of 187 tests between April and July to a daily average of 297 tests for the week ending 19 September. The Ministry of Health has increased vaccine availability and access. Public education on vaccinations will continue to be intensified. The government has maintained communication with all parties in the medical fraternity, including the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association. As a means of improving dialogue and, the, and inclusion, the government has, through legislation, established the National COVID-19 Management Center to ensure the participation of a wide cross-section of the society in the struggle against COVID. Most importantly, the government has insisted that all decisions regarding the efforts at mitigating the COVID crisis have been evidence-based on the advice of medical experts and endorsed by the chief medical officer. The common risk mitigation measures like social distancing, mask wearing and sanitizing will not be sufficient if we are to win this war against COVID. Health experts worldwide have said that the main solution to our problem of COVID infection is to get the country vaccinated to a level of herd immunity. The faster we get there, the quicker we get back to some level of normality. In the pre-vaccination period of this pandemic, locking down the country was the only effective tool to bring the level of virus spread under control. While this works then, it came at a heavy economic cost to the country, as well as creating other health issues. A complete lockdown of our country is therefore an unlikely option for the government. It would be too costly an option at a time when the government's financial resources are waver thin. Moreover, a complete lockdown can only be a temporary solution. While a complete lockdown will result in an improvement in controlling the spread of the virus, its effect will be short-lived until we reopen the country, only to be faced with the emergence of viral infections. The reality is we need to remain integrated with the rest of the world to earn as thousands of jobs directly and indirectly will be affected. In remaining integrated with the rest of the world, we'll unavoidably face the real risk of viral infections. Remember, it only takes one person to be infected for the virus to spread across the country, leaving thousands infected. With the mutation of the virus, new variants can become more transmissible as we are currently experiencing with the Delta variant. With the availability of vaccines approved by the World Health Organization, we now have the best possible weapon to fight this virus. This is not my opinion, but that of health experts throughout the world who are best placed to advise the rest of us. The facts are indisputable. Over 95% of infected people who become seriously ill and requiring hospitalization or die are not vaccinated. In our local situation, the figure is even higher, 98%. To fight this war, our people must therefore get vaccinated and do so quickly. I have become aware of some of the logistical challenges in administering the vaccine and the Ministry of Health is currently taking measures to improve the situation to ensure those who wish to be vaccinated will get vaccinated in quick time. Despite what has been done, we accept that more must be done to make the vaccine more readily available to the public. We are currently ramping up all efforts to get the number of people vaccinated to the level of herd immunity. We shall secure the necessary vaccines with the availability of choice and related resources to ensure that this target is met as soon as possible. The decision is yours. 
the government will do its part to ensure that the vaccines and other resources are available to get the population vaccinated. It is now your personal and civic duty to get vaccinated. We do not need more dreadful and sorrowful experiences of the death of loved ones and friends to convince us to do the right thing. More citizens need to be vaccinated and quickly. I'm aware that some of you may have anxiety about the side effects of vaccination. Ask that you consult your doctor or other health professionals and vaccinated friends that you trust to assist you in making up your minds. Social media is not the best source of information where conspiracy theories abound about sinister intentions for vaccinating people all across the world. I am fully vaccinated. You may be aware that the pressure to vaccinate is now coming from outside with the United States requiring from November 1st that visitors are fully vaccinated. This is a clear indication of the importance of vaccination to countries like the United States in its fight against the virus. I am told the United Kingdom is also moving in the same direction. We notice worldwide that fully vaccinated people are allowed to attend sporting events, social gatherings and other public activities. Face-to-face -face education is being allowed with fully vaccinated students and teachers. The more people who get vaccinated, the sooner we can get back to the people and things that we love. I am pleading to you, those who are yet to be vaccinated, please do the right thing for yourself, your family and friends. It is also your part in ensuring that our health system is not so overwhelmed that it cannot address other health issues affecting citizens in need of urgent care. With our limited resources, your government is leaving no stone unturned to respond and improve our responses to the global COVID-19 pandemic. We have, through the introduction of a ticketing system, introduced another layer of enforcement to punish those who refuse to observe the protocols. However, since the ill-advised demolition of the custody suites, the capacity to detain lawbreakers has been reduced substantially. Cabinet has taken a decision to rebuild a detention center by renovating existing buildings on the police headquarters sites. This will improve the ability of the police to enforce protocols and save lives. This is important as the government has shown its desire to convince citizens that the adherence to protocols would be for the benefit of all. Our frontline workers have worked incessantly in the fight against the dreaded pandemic. We have heeded the requests of many frontline workers and as a token of appreciation, Government has decided to extend the existing concessions for one year for the purchase of motor vehicles. We understand the economic plight of bar owners, minibus operators and restaurant owners. The government will seek loan financing to provide the promised income support to minibus operators. It will also provide some form of income support to licensed bar owners to alleviate the loss of income to themselves and their families. Restaurant owners and their staff alike have experienced difficulties with the halting of in-house dining. Cabinet has decided that with, the mission, that with the permission of the Ministry of Health, approved restaurants will be allowed in-house luncheon and dining to facilitate vaccinated patrons only, vaccinated patrons only. In, co in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, we will continue to monitor the situation to relax the protocols and restrictions when the situation regarding infections reaches an acceptable level. We want our country and our lives to return to normal, to normal as the festive season approaches. In conclusion, I want to thank the frontline workers for the efforts in combating this global pandemic. 
We did not create this situation, but we are dealing with the consequences. The government understands your impatience and frustration, but I urge you to be patient, exercise tolerance, and observe the protocols. Let us be strong and courageous. We can overcome these difficulties if we do the right thing and continue to follow the science. This is the only way forward in this pandemic. I thank you.